Uh, good morning, adjudicators. I'm Fan Ma and he's Lo Ko Yang. We are from HQJ College, and we are here to present our findings on finding the expected number of random reversals to sort a permutation using matrix equation for application in genetics. A bit of background on our problem first. It originated from biology, where geneticists wanted to find the minimum number of reversals required to transform a gene configuration into another. So we wanted to see if finding the expected number instead of the minimum will provide any new insights. A uh, bit of terminology first before we proceed. Uh, permutation here will be interpreted as a rearrangement of the elements in the n tuple 1 to n. So here are some examples of a permutation when n is equal to 5. Note that the last one is also valid, and in particular, it is an identity permutation, the permutation where the elements aren't rearranged at all. A reversal here is an action on a permutation and denoted as rho ij. So to perform a reversal on the permutation, you take out a segment of the elements from the permutation, reverse the order, and put them back in. So for example, 3, 4, 2, 5, 1, 6, row 2, 4 is 3, 5, 2, 4, 1, 6. A random reversal is also an action on the permutation, and it's done by choosing ij from d as defined here with uni uniform discrete distribution, and then applying row minimum of ij, maximum of ij. So for example, when n is 3, these are six possible ij's you have. And if our permutation is 3, 1, 2, then these three are the possible outcomes. So here's our problem. Given any permutation of length n, what is the expected number of random reversals required to transform it to the identity permutation? Our method to tackle the problem is as follows. We start by generating all the possible permutations of length n in lexicographical order, and then constructing a Markov chain based on where the permutations can reach another with a single reversal and find its right stochastic matrix. With the stochastic matrix, we can then find and uh, construct a coefficient matrix as well as a matrix equation. And finally, we can solve the equation to obtain the answers we need. So we start off by generating the permutations in lexicographical order, which is defined here. It's also commonly known as dictionary order. So for example, 21345 comes just before 21354. But it's not actually practical to generate all the permutations just to find one of them, the index of one of them. So we can utilize a lemma code and the factorial number system to assign a number to each permutation. So for example, if our permutation is 3142, then its limit code would be 2010. If that's a number in factorial base, it corresponds to 13 in decimal base, so we assign the number 13 to 3142. Interestingly, it's just one less than its index in lexicographical order. And in fact, we can extend it to all permutations. That's the number we assign to it is one less than the index of it in lexicographical order. With that, we can now move on to generate the Markov chain. Here's the uh, Markov chain when n equals to 3. Each of the permutations is a state, and the arrows show the possible actions on it, or the reversals for most of them. The remaining arrows should be labeled a third, but have been omitted. With that, we can obtain our stochastic matrix, or more specifically, a right stochastic matrix, the, where the entries on each row sum to 1. It's used to describe the probabilities of transitions as shown formally here as well. And here is the stochastic matrix when n equals to 3. One of the theorems that is well known and we also proved in the paper is that if we raise the stochastic matrix to the power of k, then it represents the probabilities of the transitions, but with k random reversals instead. So for example, if our initial permutation is 1, 3, 2, then after two random reversals, those will be the power of four possible states it could have been. And the probabilities can be also found by reading off the second row here in the matrix. We then proceed to prove our more properties of the stochastic matrix. We found that its density, that is the number of non-zero entry divided by the size of the matrix, is as shown here, n tends to zero as n tends to infinity. We also found that mn to the power of k tends to the matrix shown here as k tends to infinity. We can also find more properties of the matrix by dividing it into block matrices. <coughs> so for example, when we uh, set the top left matrix as a one by one, we can find out that the top left is actually just 
the entry one, the top right will be a zero matrix, the bottom right will be symmetric, and the bottom left can be determined from the sequence A10630. The sequence is uh, can be defined by reading off the infinite matrix here by its anti-diagonals, and the matrix is in turn defined by the formula there. Alternatively, we can divide the MN into N squared block matrices, that is, N divisions on both sides. We notice that the block matrices not on the first row and not on the main diagonal have only one, one over N choose two in each column and each row. And the block matrices on the main diagonal are similar to the whole of the matrix on the smaller size, that is, the bottom part has the same distributions of zeros and ones. So, for example, we have M4 here, and the block matrix has the distribution of zeros and ones here like this. And if we look at M3, the bottom part has the same distribution of zeros as ones as shown as well. So then we can move on to construct the coefficient matrix and the matrix equation. Going back to the main problem of finding the expected number of reversals, we found that the number for a particular permutation depended on its neighbors and so on and so on. So then we have to actually uh, write out a whole series of equations and solve them. After assigning the variables, we found that Qn of 1 is 0 by definition because it just asks how many reversals does it check to transform the identity permutation to itself. And for the rest, we have to uh, write down n factorial minus 1 equations and this can be more represented cleanly with a matrix equation shown here. Note that Mn is defined using this equation. But that's not really helpful for finding Mn. So in theorem 5, we prove that we can find capital Mn using the work we've done before, where Qn is the bottom right submatrix of small Mn. We also prove some properties of capital Mn, such as that it's weakly diagonally dominant, positive semi definite, and its determinant is between 0 and 1 inclusively. Finally, we solve the equation. To solve the equation, we attempt to use, make use of the sparsity of the matrix. That is, it has a lot of zeros per the size of the matrix. So if we can utilize it, that means we only need to store the non-zero entries of the matrix and not all of its elements. So, it's, so the storage of it will be not as related to its size as much. We propose two types of methods of solving the problem in general. The first is direct methods. That is, we attempt to get the solution directly via the algorithm. Uh, we propose that uh, LU decomposition can make use of the sparsity of the matrix as well. And as for Cholesky decomposition, we aren't quite sure whether it will work because it requires the matrix to be positive to same, uh, definite, but we haven't proved it yet. We also suggested that it may ignore the sparsity of the matrix. For Gaussian elimination and Kramer's rule, they obviously work, but they will either ignore the sparsity or just be plain inefficient. As for iterative methods, that is, we attempt to find the solution by applying an algorithm iteratively until we get a good enough approximation. So we propose that the Jacobi iteration and gauss seidel iteration can simply use the bottom right of the stochastic matrix, that is Qn. And we also suggested that n factorial appears to be a good initial estimate because it seems close to a solution we found using direct methods. As for Newman series, although it's not recommended in hindsight, we, if it were to work, then we can use some multiplication to replace the large sum that it requires. So in the end, we managed to obtain results with direct methods for n equals to 3 to 7, inclusive. And uh, here's the result for n equals to 3, it's 55665. But the computation time for the larger n turns out to be too long with direct methods, and we haven't obtained any results yet. Some potential further development on the problem include uh, finding out whether the problem can be done in polynomial time, and applying to the problem with signed permutations, that is, each element has a direction on its own, so reversing it alone will have an effect. Thank you.